surrender. We surrender. Jesus, all to you. Oh, glory. Yes, I said, yes, I said, my God. After the water, my God. Yes, to our heart, hearted. After the Lord. Oh, glory. Jesus. Yes, Savior. Jesus, the Christ in us, Lord, is the hope of glory. Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. The finished work of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, Jesus. Yes, it's not about you, Lord. It's not about nothing. Oh, yes, Lord. Jesus. Beloved, let's speak in the in the spirit. Let's speak in the spirit. Let your belly flow the rivers of living water. Speak in the spirit, Lord. Speak in the spirit. In this time of consecration, we are setting ourselves apart to seek for the message of the grace of God. Had it not been His mercy, had it not been His grace, we wouldn't have come this far. He has been with us from January to now. We have bread in us. What can we render unto him? Beloved, open your mouth and say something to your father. Open open your mouth and say something to your father. For he has been merciful. He has been gracious. Had he not been his mercy and his grace, where would we have been? Had he not been him on our side, where would we have been? Say something to your father. Father, we thank you. In this fast of consecration, even in this season as we consecrate ourselves, we ask for your mercy. The blood of Jesus. The blood of mercy. The blood of Jesus, beloved, is the blood of mercy. It's the blood of grace. And it will be the blood of Jesus. The mercy and the grace revealed on the cross 2,000 years ago. I and you, we wouldn't have been here. We would have been dead long ago. But by His grace and by His mercy, revealed on the cross by the Son of Man, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is why we are here. That is why we are here. That is why we have breath. That is why we are born to say that in Him we live, in Him we move, in Him we have our being. Beloved, then say something to Jesus. Then say something to Jesus. Thank you for His blood. Be shared on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for His blood. For His consecration. Thank you for His blood. Thank you for the opportunity given you to even consecrate yourself, to set yourself apart. When you are consecrating yourself, you are setting yourself apart to go to your maker, to appreciate your maker, to give all thanks to your maker, to have thanks and take no thanks to your maker. As we have gathered here, oh Lord, and talk about consecration, let's tell him something, something from the depths of your heart. For his mercy and his grace revealed on the cross for you. How grateful you are for his mercy and his grace. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Your mercy and your grace revealed through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. He said, the Bible says that we should come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace. Beloved, we have come. We have come to his presence once again. We have come to his presence once again. Be for God's mercy. Be for his grace to carry us, oh Lord, just as he has carried us from January to now. Plead for his mercy and grace uh, to carry us from now to the same uh, from now to the same uh, for yourself, for your family, for the community at uh, for the body of 
Truly, this is our conclusion of our consecration and fast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are coming off of it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The purpose of the consecration and the fast has been completed. Amen. The theme again, right, is the more grace to fulfill our destiny ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're at this time we're going to have a song from our Lady Candle. Amen. We thank God for how far he's brought us. It's not by our might, it's not by power, by the Spirit says the Lord. Um, the song is, um, you probably know it, we are a chosen generation and we've been called forth to show his excellence. All we require for life, God has given us. Amen. Amen.
There is no salvation. Yes. No. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Without the Lord, there is no salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask everyone to stand at this time. Lord Jesus, we pray for now, God Jesus, that you, O oh God, bless this word that comes forth on tonight, Lord Jesus. We pray even now, Lord Jesus, that you will bless, oh God, me, Lord Jesus, oh God, oh God, decrease, bless that your spirit might be increased as our prayer on tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord God, oh God, even now, Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. In thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeem, and all the people of God say, Amen. Amen. And while you're yet standing, the scripture comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 6. Joshua, chapter 6. God for his hour of power prayer service. The final service here in Franklin. Amen. There is another level, another place where God has called us to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 6. And we're getting at the first verse. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the chosen of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall come past the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. Everyone standing. Children, standing on your feet. The fifth verse, and it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. Hallelujah. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and come past the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. Skipping to the 15th verse. 15th verse. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day, and come past the city after the same manner seven times, only on that day they come past the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets. Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Amen. Verse 20. Verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass. When the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. Hallelujah. The wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. The last verse 21, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep, and donkey with the edge of the sword. This is the reading of the word of the Lord. Just repeat after me the promise, the, promise. the fulfillment, the, 
fulfillment. The power of God. The power of God. The promise, the fulfillment, the power of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The promise, the fulfillment, the power of God. Hallelujah. The story of Joshua leading the Israelites to bring down the walls of Jericho is a powerful account that demonstrates the faithfulness and might of the Lord. This narrative is part of the fulfillment of the greater promise that God made the Israelites, that they indeed would enter into the promised land. Jericho was the gateway city to Canaan that the Israelites came to when they entered the promised land. The city of Jericho was surrounded by walls so that no one, I said no one, was able to get in. And the walls served as solid protection against all attacks. These gates had been locked. They had been locked to keep the Israelites out of it. So this moment is incredibly important because the Israelites have finally entered the land promised to them by God. And they go on to successfully conquer the first city along their journey. The fallen walls of Jericho become a key affirmation that God was fulfilling his promise to them. Amen. God was fulfilling his promise to them. And that God would be with them as they took possession of this promised land. So Joshua gathered the army and priests just as God had instructed him to do. Now for the first six days, the first six days, the armed men marched around the city. Armed men marched around the city once while the priests had trumpets and carried the Ark of the Covenant. They did this for six days. They did this for six days. But it was on the seventh day. Someone say the seventh day. The seventh day. On the seventh day, as God had instructed, they marched around the city seven times. Hallelujah. The priests blew their trumpets and the army gave a loud shout. Now they had to make some noise. So to Joshua, the army, and the priests, this may have seemed like a very different approach to overthrowing the city of Jericho. However, Joshua led the Israelites to do what God had instructed him to do. Hallelujah. According to the Lord's promise, and the Israelites being obedient to what God instructed on the seventh day. The seventh day, the walls of Jericho fell in on an amazing victory for the Israelites by the power of God. The account of the walls of Jericho coming down is a significant part of God's promise coming to pass that the Israelites would indeed enter into and possess the promised land. Amen. This incredible passage of scripture in the book of Joshua holds many valuable lessons that we as Christians can learn from and apply to our lives and our understanding of God himself. Perhaps you are waiting on God. Perhaps you are waiting on God. Hallelujah. Or maybe you are wondering if here come Drew, whatever your situation, the fallen walls of Jericho remind us of God's power and faithfulness that we can believe in and put our hope in. And the verse, first verse the first way I'm going to follow is follow God. Follow God. Even if the journey seems impossible or unexpected, we must follow God. 
No matter what it is. No matter the distractions, no matter what people say, no matter what people try to keep you down and try to, um, don't want you to talk about Jesus, but God knows there is a way out of no way. So follow God, even if the journey seems impossible or unexpected. Now, when we learn to listen, when we learn to listen, we can hear God speaking to us. Amen. When we listen, we can hear God speaking to us. As we were saying last week, it could be that still, small voice. Oh, yeah. Affirmation from what someone else is saying. Yeah. Sometimes it can even be something you come across on the TV, right? That God speaks in multiple, multiple types of media, different sources that he can use to confirm what he is saying. Yeah. The outcome may not be instant. So keep waiting on the Lord. Amen. The outcome may not be instant. So keep waiting on the Lord. That's why even here, as we hear Kingdom Life Temple and Deliverance, we continue to move on and to move forward to what God has called us to, the land that he has called us to possess. Amen. 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 Because truly, this is a season where we need more grace to fulfill our destiny ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the, it's not, it might not just be instant, but we keep on waiting on God. Amen. Wait on your promise. Wait on your promise. God is a better than obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Obedience Amen. is better than sacrifice. Amen. Amen. When we talk about this obedience, obedience to God is better than sacrifice. Sometimes we don't want to listen just like a child might not want to listen to a parent. Isn't that right, children? Amen. But when we learn to obey, right? Not just our parents, right? But we obey God, right? Yeah. It's better than sacrifice because God or even our parents could be protecting us from harms that we might not see. But mm -hmm. God sees and protects his children from all things are seen and unseen. So the devil wants to make you feel inferior. Know that the devil wants to make you feel inferior. He wants to make you feel like you're less than. He wants to shut your mouth. He doesn't want you to share the word of the gospel. But the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ yes. died on the cross. He rose on the third day and resurrected and he is yet alive today is the good news. Yeah. The good news of the gospel. Oh, yeah. The good news of grace. Because God's grace is greater than anything yeah. we can ever encounter in our lives. God didn't only anoint you for the assignment, but he also anointed you for the attacks. Yes, God didn't only anoint you for the assignment, but he also anointed you for the attacks. Amen. No matter what enemies are doing, whatever, whatever enemies are doing, we're, so last night we're here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God didn't only anoint you for the assignment, but he also anointed you for the attacks. Let us pay attention here, right? Because no matter what it is, the anointing that we have is for an assignment. The devil comes to try to kill, steal, and to destroy, try to attack, try to, oh, hallelujah, he tries to make us lose our focus, wants to shut our mouths, but he will anoint us for every attack. Because if you have no haters, you're not that gifted. <laughs> if you're not, if you have no haters, you're not that gifted. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the word of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Word of the Lord is the promise, the fulfillment, the power of God. Amen. Pray that this word was a blessing to you on tonight as truly um, this was a great time of consecration and fast. But we thank God that we made it through to the other side. We made it through to the winning side. Uh, so we thank God for that. And may God forever bless you. Thank you.
Hallelujah.